Hey there Bixby developers. Today we're going to do a quick tutorial on match patterns in Bixby Studio. So what exactly are match patterns within Bixby Studio? Basically when you are in some kind of layout file like for example an input view or a result view you have access to this match key. Now normally you just do a simple kind of one-to-one -one match where you just match the specific model that you're going for in terms of you know what you want to actually match this view to right but we can actually do quite a bit more with these match patterns like for example we have access to the from output and from input keys and we're going to take a look at what exactly you can do with these and how useful they can be for your capsule to increase engagement and we're going to be doing something similar to this example right here that you can see down below but we're going to, you know, I guess uh, live code it with one of my capsules. And we're just going to do it with the copycat capsule that I created. What would you like me to say? Hello with a British accent. And here we can actually change the voice. Which charming voice would you like me to change to? To actually have Bixby say it with a British accent. Hello with a British accent. And we can also change the input as well. What would you like me to say? But we can also make this much more engaging by basically acknowledging the inputs that the user has made so far. So how do we do that? We can do that with match patterns. And starting off, we can start by, for example, showing which voice the user chose. And let's say, for example, we have this copycat action here which collects all this stuff, but we also can see that it collects the voice as well. So how do we actually access this voice input right here in order to display it on the screen? For example, when Amy's talking, we want to show them, hey, we are now listening to Amy's voice. In order to do that, we need to use match patterns. And in this case, we can see that we have access to these keys. We have the max many max one and in this video we're mostly going to be focusing on the from input to output whatever right these ones in particular so we're going to start with the from output copycat and because this action here is coming from the output of the copycat action this is why we're able to access this because this copycat action outputs the output object if we take a look Right here, we can see that the output is just named output in this case. So now we actually have access to the from output key. And now all we have to do is to add this bit of code here, which I will explain really quick. Basically, this checks to see if copycat the action has the voice inside of it, which we, if we take a look here, again, it is right here. It is one of the inputs. And if, of course, it exists, then we display a single line where we end up displaying now speaking and the voice that's currently speaking. And now if we use Bixby to say something with, let's say, one of the voices in it. Hello with a British accent. We can now see here that it's showing us whose voice is actually being used to read us the text here. In this case, it's Amy's. But of course, that is just one simple application of these match patterns. And in this case, for example, it allows you access to the inputs inside of this action. But we can also utilize this in an input view as well. So in this example, we're going to actually show the user if they've selected a voice, we're going to show them what voice they have selected. And that way, you know, it's a bit more engaging. For example, instead of just saying, what would you like me to say? Bixby can say something like, what would you like me to say with Amy's voice? So how do we do that? Well, we need to add another match pattern here, which is the two input copycat, copycat. And this capsule, for example, basically what it does is we have the copycat model and if you want to, for example, change the input that goes in it, it ends up calling the get input, which basically fills out the input key right here. Yes, which, which ends up populating the input 
within the action itself. So that's why that we are able to use the to input copycat because this is you know going to be an input for the action copycat. Hello with a British accent. What would you like me to say? Which is this screen. And now that we are at this screen, we can have a say, what would you like me to say with whomever's voice? So in order to do that, we just use the standard Bixby notation, notation in this case, copycat.voice, say with, apostrophe s, voice. And see here we can see this error or this warning. This is copycat.voice might be empty. In order to address that, all you have to do is surround this with brackets. And this way it will be optional. So for example, if it exists, then this block of text will appear. And if the voice does not exist, this block of text won't appear. So this bracket is very useful for that. Anyway, let's go ahead and see what ends up happening. Hello with a British accent. Change input. What would you like me to say with Amy's voice? And now we can see that here it is showing us that we have Amy's voice selected. The next thing that I think is a useful feature is for example, let's say you don't want to lose this text here that you had already inputted and let's say you want to change the input. What would you like me to say with Amy's voice? You can see here that this box is now, you know, empty basically, right? There's no text here. And now I have to type this whole thing again in order to basically start from where I left off. Now, what we can actually do is we can still access the last input for, you know, the user, whatever the last input was that the user put in. Because in my modeling, I have the last input actually as one of the keys and as well as an input for the copycat action. So this is actually preserved as the last input and therefore we will be able to access it within our action. So now if we save this and start over. Hello with a British accent. But this time when we click change input, we can expect to see the last input there. What would you like me to say with Amy's voice? There it is. And now I can simply edit this without having to retype out the entire phrase again. Hello with a British accent. How spectacular. And just like that, we've already added some nice additional functionality by using the simple match patterns. And I highly recommend implementing them, especially if you want to, you know, kind of improve immersion. That way, you know, Bixby continuously acknowledges your current or previous inputs or settings for your capsule. And that way, you know, the user will also realize Oh, okay, now I'm still using Amy's voice and I'm changing the input in this example. So yes, now that you know how to do this, the possibilities are essentially endless and I'm excited to see what you end up doing with this knowledge. And really quick, I wanted to mention that match patterns can be used not just in layout and view files, but also support files like navigation support and activity support. I'll link down below in the description an example of navigation support using match patterns. And yeah, that's it.